Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Space Explorers. I'm Cam, joined by Lewis. I'm Lewis, I'm but back Lewis, again. Lewis, we're in Antarctica. Look Someone seems to be well prepared and dressed up the we, occasion today. We are blatantly going to die. Who is the one person who's going to survive? Well, Hello. We've got Dr. Beth with us. Hello everybody. Well, I'm really excited to be joining you. Um, I've just got back from Antarctica where I was working for the European Space Agency. So we're doing a lot of research down there looking at the effects of living sort of in an isolated environment, which hopefully should help inform us about living um, on a spaceship in the future. Well, that's perfect because today we are going to take a journey to Mars in the game Mars 2030. Uh, so let's jump straight into it. Okay, get excited. Look, it's Mars. So welcome to Mars 2030, the Hall of Fame. As you can see, no one's made it to Mars yet. So what we're going to do is actually the game begins with us launching into space and then beginning our journey to Mars. And various things are going to come along the way and we have to deal with them as a team. Okay. okay. So, um, and you are perfectly suited for this because you mentioned you did research in Antarctica. Why do people go to Antarctica if they're going to research space stuff? So all the research in Antarctica is really looking at sort of long duration space flight missions. So okay. at the moment, if we have a medical problem up on the International Space Station, we can normally evacuate people really quickly, so sort mm. of in a few hours. But if we're looking at going a little bit further, so for example, the moon or Mars, we're going to be taking a lot longer to get people back, if at all, of course, um, if they're to have some kind of problem out there. So we're really looking at the sort of psychological and medical effects of um, taking a crew a little bit further well, away. But they built an AI, according to the lore of this game, to select the best possible candidates for the journey. Um, how, how are people selected in, in real life for space missions? Well, well, I guess what sort of AI, composition of, of crew as well? Well, in terms of people's skills and, and balance. That's it. I mean, there's so many things to take into consideration. It's sort of how the individual is going to cope in that kind of isolation and environment, mm -hmm. but also how they're going to fit into the team, which is probably the most important ah. part. You know, you can't have a team of sort of 10 leaders. You don't want so lots of egos, I guess, no. clashing with each it. other. Yeah. Right, so we need to pack our bags before we go. Um, so we can take, you know, rations, panels, circuits, wire, ammo, and g generic meds. Just, just medicine. Meds um, in general. So I hope they're good rations. I think food's really important when you're going on a long duration yeah, mission. Yeah, some of that. And how many other people were there with you for those 14 months? Is, is there much of a community? Yes. Yeah, so to with? either side of, so it's nine months where you're totally isolated, and that's what the European Space Agency are really interested okay. in that bit where you're sort of isolated as a crew. And then either side of that, it's really busy on the base, so sort of preparing for the next over winter. Fresh blood, more people to talk that's to. It. Lots new scientists <laughs> coming down so it's no, a really nice time did to you take there. much ammunition because it's, ammunition? it's saying i should take ammo Ooh. is that a thing that you took did you um, take any ammo with you <laughs> well in case of the penguins yeah so, so there's no polar bears in antarctica are there? so you, you're fine right, for no. polar bears oh unless actually, the penguins get together en masse <laughs> that's it i have had a polar bear in cancer but not in yeah. um, antarctica that would be very and helpful. in fact actually at concordia we don't have any animals living there so at minus 80 um we're actually looking to see if we can find any extreme bacteria that might yeah. survive outside yeah. there wow launch time Ooh. I am loving these retro graphics. Here we go. <laughs> Where are we Last launching off. from? Is this Baikonur? Uh, I have no idea. Let's let's say yes. Let's okay. say yes. yes. <laughs> Beth, you are absolutely right. Here we go. Now we turned launch so hazards are these, on. Are these remember? random numbers on the right here? Wait, that's not showing us anything particularly meaningful. Uh, I I have no idea. <laughs> let's say yes. Let's say they're random. That was easy. All right, so here we're we are. Ooh, we're on our we're way. in space. We're on our way. Now, okay. I'll, I'll let you know what I actually have. Oh, there we go. Past the orbit of the moon. I'll let you know what I have control over here, okay? So um, we can move the ship up and down. Hey, the crew are celebrating. That's good. Morale is high. That's important, <laughs> I guess, right? Morale. Um, but yeah, so we can move the ship up and down. We can uh, fire our Ooh. our guns. Okay. And then we can bring up information about... Um, so th these are all the different parts of the ship and how they're doing. Uh, if we have tasks to do, they'll appear here. Mm -hmm. And we can also uh, have a look at our crew if we click the crew button. Um, we can see where they are. They're all in the the front. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, the cabin. <laughs> where, where you'd put them. Um, yeah, I don't know what those little arrows are that come across the screen. I've never been able to figure it out. I also don't know what this number represents. Okay. There's things that I don't know about this game. It's all very confusing. <laughs> we'll work it out together. But my main question is, right, allegedly we've Ooh, already traveled yeah. two million miles. Okay? Goodness me. Um, that so seems a bit fast. Than the ISS. A, a lot further than the ISS, yeah. And also, we... Oh, here we go. Our first thing to do. Uh, now, Dr. Beth Healy, as the doctor, um, I think this is your decision. Okay. So, a crew member has become depressed. Oh, no, already. And we can... And Vince, he doesn't last very long. We, we can send Vince okay. to the media room. Right. Or to the medical lab. Or we can just ignore Vince. Oh. What would you like to do? Well, I think... Oh! Oh! Well, what you happened? took too long to, okay. to decide. Oh, is he gone? 
I think okay. I think we ignored him. Oh, Whoops. No. Sorry, Vince. Okay. Well, we definitely shouldn't ignore our crew members that are getting. A so bit I mean, well, I mean, presumably this this is an issue. This does come up for your long duration isolation studies in Antarctica. Yeah, you, I mean, it's you, a you, tough Does anyone have a, a personal way of com- combating depression? And um, I think it's really about the crew that you're with. So if you're sort of able to make close relationships with at least a few of people on your crew, then it, you're definitely going to cope yeah. a bit better. And also with the long polar night that we have down in Antarctica. So I went for a hundred oh. days without seeing the sun. It's Here we go. Similar effects as well as a so we were to to the limb has withered oh okay to the gym i reckon to the space gym yeah to the space gym with you sabrina okay <laughs> off she goes and this this is some of the research that you've been doing in concord as well isn't it you're you're not there just a, just there as a participant you're there as a doctor that's you're it. running medical tests you're, mm. you're analyzing yourself and, and everyone else while you're there yeah that's it i mean that was my job really was doing all the research and um, for you so down there um and also as a participant as yeah. well and so we're looking at lots of different things so the isolation the effects of the low light levels and sort of long polar night on the crew a little bit on the altitude as well so all sorts of different and, and things. what sort of results did you find what, what what sort of things came up out of your research while you're on, well, on the bottom of the planet. a lot of it hasn't been um, sort of published so far, so I can't sort of say exactly. But um, I think we find a lot out about sort of crew dynamics, especially. So we're monitoring yeah. crew interactions and how that was changing. Because you, you wear special watches, don't you, which kind of track, That's track it, yeah. your movements through the station. And those are really interesting because they tell us a lot about how we're interacting with each other and also sort of our personal preferences over time. So are we looking to sort of isolate ourselves yeah. or are we searching out sort of social interaction with the rest of the crew and really looking for sort of critical time points in the mission? where people might be more at risk of isolating yeah. themselves. And do you, do you use that as, as like an alert? Do you notice that perhaps one crew member is starting to be a bit more withdrawn and they used to be more sociable now they're not? Oh, speaking of that flagged up. Ooh. The crew are arguing. So, I mean, this is very topical oh, now, isn't go. it? This yeah. is exactly <laughs> what's happening on the, on the Mars 2030 spaceship That's here. It. Although we can't... Oh, oh and as a and result, again. Alexina, Alexa is depressed. Um, okay. Where to? Medical room or so Is this a first time? Room? Medical or media? Um, if it's first time, I think media to start okay. with. Just go in. And so what sort okay. of facilities do you have in Concordia for things like Media Lab? You have a, a big library of videos and films Yeah, so we have unlimited sort of um, array of videos and series and things. But obviously, I mean, that's not the main thing that we do. So we've got the gym, um, a lot of social interaction. Yeah. So the chef's really good at that as well, sort of getting the crew Keeping together. Keeping people happy and well fed. Yeah, and you have to actually, so it's compulsory to go for lunch and dinner. And that was okay. something that Issa advised to us. And that's because it's really easy to kind of shift. Start your, losing your appetite if you get yeah, a bit down. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And shifting your um, sleep-wake cycle as well. So that kind of maintains yeah, the yeah. routine. And, and how often do you get to go? outside at Concordia. Well, you I mean, because as we saw, you have to put a whole <laughs> lot of equipment on. It's not like popping out to the shops. Yeah, you dive a... exposure very quickly exactly. if you're not properly protected. Exactly. I mean, it's a bit like going Ooh. on a spacewalk in some respects. Another thing. wear all the gear. Sorry to intrude. A crew member has the flu. <gasps> Now no. I've got a few questions about this, but if someone did present with with an illness, mm. um, would you? So where we? Would you seal them like uh, in a crew in the crew quarters so they wouldn't disease would spread, spread to other people? Yeah, oh. I mean, we didn't actually see a lot of things like the flu because, of course, you're not introducing new bacteria and things into that environment, so you're quite enclosed. There's no one to catch it off, I guess. Exactly. Is there? Yeah. yeah. When yeah. all the crew came back after the winter, it's like fresh as flu. You know, they were sort of everyone <laughs> all got sick. But during the mission, for us, that wasn't a huge problem. So we talked about the psychological hazards of. of space flight and the kind of things you study in Antarctica but that, that's n- not the only thing you need to be worried about in space are there mm, um, yeah. and Nisa I guess is doing research into the other um, health implications of microgravity and radiation yeah definitely definitely there's loads of different platforms looking at all sorts of different things so the effects of microgravity yeah. as you say um, sort of m- more things like Mars 500 so, so what is science. microgravity just to ask what, what, what do you what do you guys mean when you say microgravity? <laughs> like when you're floating around. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so pr- pretty much weightlessness and the effects of that. But it's, I guess yeah. it's not technically weightless. Is that why it's called microgravity? Right. Got you. Okay. I'm catching up. That's good. <laughs> um, all right. And what? Yeah. What kind of impact does that have over? What, what does that do to your body? Because it looks like a lot of fun floating around. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to, love to have a go. Um, but it's uh, really affecting sort of your bones and your muscles because uh, over time, they sort of you start to waste away a little bit. So that's really what it's looking at. But that's not something that Concordia was good at, no. of course, because that's more things like bed rest studies and things like that, which we'll be looking at um, to see how that affects people. We also had the space flight simulator down there as well for the Sawyers, and so we're looking at training schedules as well, which mm-hmm. is kind of useful for. Oh, so you did like have this. space hardware, space yeah, so um, setups while you were there. Yeah, so absolutely. So this was uh, so it's the real space flight simulator for the Sawyers, which astronauts use to train on, and we're looking at sort of how training needs to sort of 
or training schedules over time and retention of skills. So, cool. so if we're on a mission like this, um, mm. presumably the astronauts probably need to be training on a simulator. So you don't want to arrive at Mars and having not forgotten how to land. Exactly. That would get awkward. Yeah. So maybe maybe they'll take. Well, this they were conducting them. experiments <laughs> according to uh, I don't know what they're experimenting on or with, but apparently that's what they're doing at the moment. Our crew. In fact, I wonder if we can see more. Oh no! A t- no, no, let's, let's no, no, not no. abort the mission. Sorry. <laughs> that button you just pushed there. Don't Wrong push button. that one again. The crew arguing again. Oh no! <coughs> okay. I have no idea what about. So did d- does this come up lots when you're in Concordia? I mean, did you have any? Did you have any you've got 13 people yeah, to talk did you to you have for any nine blazing months. rows with like <laughs> everyone being like, "No, it's your turn to clean up or whatever." I mean, it, it's a tough environment, and obviously, like the human aspect is definitely the yeah. challenge of living there. I wouldn't say compared to different crews, I think we're ah. fairly mellow, and you are quite well selected before you go. We have what's called human behavior performance training, which we have at the European Astronaut Center before we go, yeah. which really helps us to sort of live and work together effectively as. So a you crew. do a whole run of kind of psych tests. And making sure that exactly, yeah. you're kind of stable but will also get on well with other people. That's it, going to fit in. So, yeah, before I even had my interview, I had loads of like psychological testing and then this further training with ESA before yeah. we went down side. So we're as well prepared as you can, but of course, you know, you do run into trouble. It's always the unexpected. Well, it's always unpredictable. Yeah. It? <laughs> it would really suck if, you know, you went in for it and then you're like, yeah, I'm sorry, you've not been selected. Like, Why? Well, because the testing revealed you're a jackass. <laughs> you know, like, be, you're just really, really, likes yeah. really annoying and no one likes you. You'd so be like, yeah. oh, 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 okay. <laughs> no big deal. Wow. Uh, but yeah, was there anyone? Was there anyone who you don't have to name names? But anyone who you didn't get on with? And there's th- 13 people. You know, what, what, was, wow. what was the thing that caused most arguments? What was yeah. like? I say it's the when you're living in a shared Ooh. student house, it's the same person never does the washing up. Is is wow. that equivalent? It's, it's communication. I mean, it's like in normal life as well. You know, you're not going to get on with everybody perfectly. So you know, some uh, some know. people are colleagues, some people are yeah. friends, and it just depends on. And did you analyze the, the data from the watches about who talked to who? Do, can you look at I don't know, like network analysis, something, see who are the clusters of friends? Yeah, and definitely. Chasms That's between different. That's groups. it, and looking at sort of when subgroups are forming. So within a crew of thirteen, it's typical to get subgroups. It'd yeah. be unusual not to, you yeah. know, sort of everyone all hanging out together. All thirteen. Would you all of eat you, together? Yeah, is that so part of the process they try to keep to go through? And again, because that's bonding. compulsory. But actually, what happens? So during the winter time, when you've got sort of no point of reference in terms of the sunlight, people shift in their sleep wake cycles. So actually, I was finding that I was waking up and lunch would be my breakfast, okay. and sort of dinner would be my lunch, and then I'd be staying up really late in the night and having like a snack as my dinner. And even if you so try you to force yourself to go to bed and then you set the alarm to get yeah, up, yeah, it's really tough. I mean, You're I did try that for a while, but the problem is it's really hard to sort of be awake and sort of focus when you're doing the research you have yeah. to kind of really run with it when you're when you're at your most active and most awake so I used to work so late into the night because I was getting on really well and yeah. then sort of have problems then um, in the morning so you can't be up 24 hours a day unfortunately and um, and that's how it happened and also sort of within your social groups as well you know all my friends were doing a similar profile as well so if I'd sort of woken up super early I would have missed them late yeah, at yeah. night so it's kind of it's a bit of peer pressure keep, as well in keep yourself in sync with people yeah, yeah. we're so. experiencing a solar storm uh what's a solar st- is that a thing so is th- this is another thing? radiation pulse i guess isn't it this is okay. this is the something like a solar flare getting a, a wave of energetic protons and another radiation or oh, shields are down <gasps> oh, no. oh god our crew must be getting irradiated okay. Oh, that's, that's not very bad. good. Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> is that because we were rerouting at oh, the uh, long moment? Uh, I don't know. Oh, we're um, 25% of our way. Hey, we're on the way. We're on the way there. And we've traveled, okay, so we can work it out. We've traveled 50 million miles. Okay. Okay, so I guess it's, they're saying it's 200 million miles. Right. Um, and in a quarter of the way, so when we travel 80 days, basically. So uh, 320 days in total. Um, do we have enough food? We j- no, we don't, right? What? Well, no, we don't bang oh, on. No, we're like, you, we're like 10 days. You, you have played this before, <laughs> guys, haven't you? We're like 15 days short of food, oh 10 no. days short of oxygen, and 10 days short of water, I think. If can, I, can we start rationing them? Is that, I don't is know. that a game option? It, didn't, it doesn't appear to be. Okay. Um, do you have space ice cream? Why would they not? <laughs> Most put, importantly, yeah. do we have space ice cream? Surely there should be an alarm that says, by the way, you haven't brought enough food. And yeah. Okay. I hope this experiment's on how to Have we got enough oxygen? Or. <laughs> or that. So wait, I, I'm wondering if I'm missing a thing that you can actually speed up because I, d- mm. nothing I seem to do seems to speed the ship up. But I'm wondering if I'm missing a control. Yeah, I think we can go faster. Well, at least the crew are happy. They haven't realised because like excellent. Crew Maybe that's status. what the arrows yeah. are. Maybe if you target. You I'm not sure if my crew status up. would be so good if I knew I didn't have enough food. I know. Oxygen. I think I imagine the morale would, would be weigh heavily slightly yeah, low. I think so. I think well, a bit let's of see how we get on. Maybe these systems will help us go faster. I don't really know. 
We did actually have two months where we didn't have very good communications at all and that was just sort of a problem with the satellite um, rather than us at Concordia. And actually, it's, it's difficult to say really whether it's harder or easier having that kind of communication. It was almost like a forced detox, wasn't it? Yeah, a forced electronic it's detox. it's difficult because it does make you a little bit more homesick. You know, people sending you messages, sending you pictures of sort of life back home. It, you know, it makes you think about home a lot yeah. more. And we don't have any control as well if someone was to have any bad news. So um, if something's happening at home, we might not necessarily know about it. Whereas if you're sort of controlling that information coming in or the team can be aware that it can be broken in a much more sort of sensitive way and you know in some it's sort of it's not necessarily a good thing to have such yeah. good communication so the communications were kind of going through like a mission control people were deciding whether to pass on bad news to you or yeah we're not not at concordia not. but mars 500 certainly okay. and perhaps that's my yeah you might want to do something similar for yeah. the actual mission you want to go, on the at the end of you've got to keep people focused on on the task that's and the it, mission that's it yeah and i think i think that that's probably not necessarily a bad thing and i don't think that astronauts necessarily wouldn't want it. I think it probably is a good thing for your yeah. team. Well, careful, Ooh. Ooh. careful. Are you the, are you the pilot. Uh, it appears Who's to the, you're in charge. go either up or down. Be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, it's too good. You can't good avoid just it. hold, they hold are steady. Big. These are big. I mean, uh, oh, I'm not Lewis. quite sure what to do now. Lewis, up, up, Lewis. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Was Lewis. that bad? <laughs> I take my hands off the control. Yeah, no, you should I'm not let me drive. <laughs> is that the end of the entire game? Yes. We don't get any save points. Oh, no. Beth, it's I'm so sorry. We didn't, didn't make it <laughs> No, but there it is. Okay, well, when we died. That was, uh, I Lewis, died. Lewis I died fault. us. It is entirely my fault. We will never know what the green plains of Mars look like, but never oh. mind. Um, but Beth, thank you so much for uh, for being here, for helping us through, I mean, as far as we got. It, no it certainly was a help. I feel like we've learned a lot about it. It's been fascinating to hear about your job and, and your life and your career. No, it's Antarctica. brilliant. It's been really fun. Like, I really enjoyed the game. So yeah, thanks if, for having me. If anyone watching wants to know more about you know what you do, or maybe how to get into the, the job that you have, how to become someone who goes to Antarctica to research, where could they find out more about about you about your life and all that stuff sure well i've got twitter at beth a healy so yeah if you've got any questions just drop me a line because i'm always happy to answer them so awesome yeah that's great. I bet when you're in Antarctica, I guess your Twitter access is not that great. So I have Twitter in Antarctica. <laughs> it's quite well connected, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. surprising. It's surprising. Yeah. Oh, there you so go. It's not there super go. fast, but you can. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. If you want more from, from Beth, don't worry, because, of course, we have a Q&A video where we are putting your questions to Beth on this channel as well. It should be there right now through the magic of video. <laughs> we haven't made it yet, but it will be. And um, yeah, we got questions from YouTube. We got questions from Twitter. It's going to be great. And coming up next, we have Kerbal Space Programme and Abby Hutty, who is literally a rocket scientist. She's a spacecraft engineer. She designs things which are sent to other planets, uh, particularly Mars, of course. Uh, so watch that video. And if yeah. you'd like to ask uh, Abby any questions, mm -hmm them in the box below in yes. the comments yeah. in the comments box right here on this video i mean i can't think of anyone better to really play kerbal space program with i mean that game is it's hard. almost as if we planned that right That's yeah i know real right? rocket science <laughs> that game is hard I, my spaceships never make it out of the orbit so it's good that we've got it's good that we've got our got some experts fantastic. on the way mm. yes okay well thank you very much for watching guys and we'll see you soon for more space explorers bye bye, bye.